Hello out there, minders. How's everybody doing this week? I uh, hope well. hope everybody is sheltering well at home. So yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen my post about this, sort of a teaser. And uh, I was really excited to get to this review. This is sort of going to be an introduction. Uh, I hope to maybe do follow-up comments and further videos down the line uh, in terms of actually painting and sketching but so yeah we're going to do a review today on the brand new spanking new Anamula toned watercolor sketchbooks that's pretty exciting to my knowledge i have not seen anything like this never seen one and we're going to look at toned sketchbooks and kind of compare to what's out there uh, but these are the first watercolor ones that i know of Anamula sent these to me and I was real excited to check them out. They are a bit hard to get a hold of right now. I know that Wet Paint up in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, has them. At least they did uh, when I made this video. So I will put a link below and uh, hopefully you can get them there if you're wanting to. And hopefully in the future they will roll out into more uh, areas where they can be purchased like Amazon, for instance. Anamula just makes great paper. I've really enjoyed their watercolor paper, their cotton watercolor paper. They're just a superior uh, maker of paper. They're very well known in printing circles for their fine art printing papers. Just a really good German brand that's been around for a long, long time. Almost as old a company as Arches, from what I understand. Or Arsch. Anyway, so let's look at these. Let's take a look at what these are. Uh, before I delve into these re in a real detailed way, I uh, want to just talk about toned sketchbooks in general and what's on the market currently. Most of you, uh, if you're familiar with toned sketchbooks, are pro probably familiar with these. These are available in just about every art store. They're the most prevalent. The, the Strathmore Toned Gray and the Strathmore tone tan and they're fine for as far as they go it's an 80 pound sketchbook paper and by the way <laughs> you're gonna see uh my life as a sketchbook artist goes into just about any sketchbook maybe three or four pages i am in this this situation where i just i have to test so many sketchbooks that i get three or four pages in now that's not true of some of my watercolor sketchbooks but uh, I have probably starts on at least four, uh, five of these toned sketchbooks. So I, I go like two or three pages in and then I go try a different one. I, I really want to do more in toned sketchbooks, but to date I haven't done a lot, just to be fair. And here, as I said, just I've been sketching with a uh, colored pencil. Here was a little bit of gouache testing. Here was some testing of the lighter, more opaque Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil colors. This was for uh, Inktober a couple years ago, I think. That was another one. And that's as far as I've gotten in this book. Oh, and again, uh, for beginners who are not familiar with toned sketchbooks and what they're for, basically it gives you a middle value as a starting place. And then you can paint, draw, usually draw and use things like colored pencil, pen and ink. In this case, I uh, used white gel pen. And you work down into your deeper values and up into your lighter values. So unlike watercolor paper or transparent watercolor where you're leaving the white uh, for your whites, uh, you use an opaque lighter color or lighter colors that are lighter than the gray. And they're very popular sketchbooks. Uh, for starting you in a middle value. They actually uh, allow you to get a full range of tone without having to paint a lot of middle values. So, and that's the draw to them. So yeah, Strathmore um, is sort of the biggest game in town, I guess you would say. That was the tone gray. This is the tone tan. I've done almost nothing in this. I think I have one piece. Yeah, I did this piece just to try it out. This was for Inktober couple years ago sort of a little forest thing and once again you can see uh, how it works this was pen and ink and then uh, I brought up the highlights in this case with some gel pen and some white colored pencil so it's easy to quickly get a range of tones without starting white and having to fill in all of these uh, mid-tones 
And Strathmore has them in different sizes. Uh, I believe they even have them in hardcovers. This is a bigger toned gray. I've done nothing in this except a little bit of testing. As I started looking at tone tan books, uh, this actually became my favorite. These are Stillman and Burns, and I really like these a lot. Again, haven't done much. Uh, this was another Halloween drawing, pen and ink drawing I did for Inktober a couple years ago. This was some elk studies. This was uh, pen and ink, watercolor pencil. This was a Faber-Castell white marker. And here is some, uh, I think, pastel pencil that was used on this charcoal pencil. So another good example of how these are used. Now, the um, paper in this I, I liked better than the Strathmore, frankly. They're pricier. These are more expensive books. This is a spiral hardcover, the Stillman and Burn. They're Nova series. Slightly different color, tan, but almost identical. There, there's more of a fiber, sort of a flannel-y looking fiber in the Strathmore. This is, is cleaner. Uh, I think what I liked, uh, I, I just like uh, Stillman and Burns sketchbooks better anyway, but what I liked is this was heavier. So I was already thinking in terms of painting in this one versus this, which is a little bit lighter. And in fact, in this one, and this is another one of their cover versions. This is their, their soft cover. I just, I love the way they bind it. These are sewn, nicely sewn bindings. And I've done almost nothing in this one, just, just like the others. Was testing some marker. Uh, but again, here's a good example of how they can be used. Uh, this was a full sort of gouache painting with some watercolor background. So this was really the only one that I tried out, with exception of another one I'm about to show you, where I tried out watercolor. But in terms of some very light washes, uh, this was heavy enough to do fine. And so, yeah, these little Wren sketches did just great. So, to date, Stillman and Burn has been my favorite. Though, as you can see, I've not done a whole lot. Now, this is the closest thing that I have seen to a tone tan watercolor paper. This is Strathmore's Tone Tan Mixed Media. And as far as I know, uh, at least when I bought this, uh, it only came in a tear-off pad. It did not come in a sketchbook. Maybe that's changed now. I, I, sh I really, uh, before I publish this video, I will probably just go check that out. But I don't think that it is. And this is the same as their Tone 10 paper, only it's a thick, heavy cardstock. Intended for mixed media, which uh, includes some wet media. Now, it's still not watercolor paper, so that's the closest. And I've done a couple sketches on pieces of this. I don't have them here. That's where uh, the industry is uh, as far as I am familiar with it. Now, uh, Hanamula has their own tone tan sketchbook. Uh, this is not even used. It's just a gorgeous book. I bought this for a holiday gift review. This is lighter paper, similar to the tone tan in Strathmore. So I don't think this is gonna be a great wet media paper. It's not nearly as heavy as a Stillman and Burn. So I can't recommend or not recommend this because I haven't used it yet. Given their reputation for paper, it's probably pretty good for dry media. But they have outdone themselves with this, I think. Or I'm hoping, anyway. These are the Tone Town watercolor books. What an awesome idea. And I have wondered if anybody was ever going to do something like this. Now, the biggest question that we'll get asked right off the bat is, is this cotton paper? And that is a no. No, this is standard pulp paper, um, but it is designed to take water and it is pretty heavy. It is not as heavy as the Tone 10 Mixed Media. But then again, it's in a bound, hard bound, case bound, sewn sketchbook. And I'm comparing this for the first time so it's only slightly heavier, but it is heavier than the Stillman and Burn. So yay, that's pretty neat. We'll do some spontaneous painting here in a minute or two. But watercolor paper, uh, acid-free, as I mentioned, case-bound, sewn, sewn binding, beautiful uh, ribbon bookmark. That's neat. Elastic closures. 
200 GSM, which I'm not sure what that translates to about 90 pound, I think. 90, 110 pound paper. This is the gray. Yeah, not as heavy as 140 pound, but typical for a sketchbook. Let's take a look at the colors. So their tone tan is significantly lighter than the Strathmore tone tan, and it's sort of a slate blue gray, whereas the uh, Strathmore here uh, is a little more of a warm, neutral to warm gray. Let's compare it to the Stillman Burn. This is a different gray yet. This is a little bit cooler gray, but not as cool as this. So it's it's pretty light, that gray. All right, let's compare the tans. This is Stillman and Burn. This is the new Honomula watercolor paper. And here is the Strath Strathmore. These are very similar colors. This is a little more muted, but about the same value lighter just like their tone tan this is lighter neither good nor bad neither here nor there just of note all right so let's take a look at what's available these two that i've opened are their biggest this is an a5 size which is 14.8 by 21 centimeters and that roughly translate to eight and a quarter by a little over five and three quarters so that's the biggest one then there's a square. These are 14 by 14 centimeter. And that's roughly five and a half by five and a half inches. And lastly, these little uh, landscape orientation books. These are A6s. And these are 10 and a half by 14.8 centimeters each. And that's roughly five and three quarters, a little more than that, by four and an eighth. All right, so let's play with the uh, toned tan one. How about? All right, let's just try something. I don't know what exactly, but I may end up getting the gouache out since it is toned. But for now, let's just start with the darker tones. Just going to get some neutral colors out here for now. I'm going to sketch, I think, direct with some very light washes to start. Now, let's do a, like a little stand of pine trees here and I'm just trying to pretend I'm out on location maybe looking at something this is just I have no idea what this is gonna be I'm just winging it and I'm not gonna use terribly wet washes so um, that's one of the tips I would have for you if you use non-cotton paper is you need to paint a little bit drier and don't plan on doing a lot of layering but pulp paper doesn't handle a lot of water very well now I will say that that Hanamula, I have a couple of uh, Hanamula's regular white watercolor sketchbooks and they're pretty good as pulp paper sketchbooks go you know if you've watched this channel for long you know what a cotton paper snob I am and I make no apology for it and in, in normal studio work for transparent watercolor especially if you use a lot of washes and glazes you really can't go wrong but there are ways to paint with cheaper paper and artists do it all the time and artists learn on it uh, it, it, it definitely is a paper to paint with if that's all you can get I'm not going to go into that whole debate. I've done a whole video on that, and it's like tons and tons of people <laughs> have commented on that. It's one of my most viewed videos. Anyway, back to these sketchbooks. We'll do a little bit of a shoreline here, so maybe I can work on a reflection and see what some wet and wet looks like. But I am going to still keep this very, very neutral and uh, very grayish. Very muted tones. Let's put in a mount. I probably should have painted this first, but I didn't know I wanted to paint it. So, it's so there.
And because of the color, you know, usually you do think of toned sketchbooks a little more for limited palettes or monochromatic palettes. So there's that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to treat it that way. The, again, keeping in mind that the color of the paper and the tone part of the paper makes up your middle value. Now I'm starting to see a little bit of buckling. About what I see with the Stillman and Burn. Maybe not as much, I don't know. Let's, add, let's establish what might be a water line here. Let's just suggest some reflections here. And then I'm going to soften that with water. Again, it's as if I'm on location, just doing a quick sketch. That's the other thing about pulp paper that dries out so quick. So it doesn't hold those wet washes very long. And you get a lot more backgrounds. But a pretty decent sketchbook paper nevertheless. And usually pulp paper works great. Or just fine, I should say, with gouache. Alright, now usually, typically, what's done a lot with tone sketchbooks is that you go in with an opaque medium and you add your highlights. Now that could be in the case of pencil or pen and ink, that could be gel pen, it could be white marker, it could be colored pencil, white colored pencil, it could be white charcoal pencil, uh, it could be gouache. And that's what I'm going to do is some gouache here. So maybe these are clouds and I'm just going to use, even though it's, even though it's tan, I'm just going to use the tan or the value of the paper as the main sky color or sky value. This is whole bind wash, by the way.
All right, so we're going to stop right there, and I think that was a successful test. I'm really excited about this paper. I think it's great. It's just a little bit of buckling. You would expect that, but not bad at all. And it just really opens up some possibilities for mixed media, which I think to me is the most exciting part. And it's all done in a really nice quality case bound book. Very happy with that. Uh, with plein air season coming up, this will be fun to use. I definitely want to do some outdoor work with this. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope that gave you some uh, information. Thank you patrons for your support. We will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.